before, well, everyone's had their appetizers, and while we're waiting for dinner, I think a, an appropriate topic that many of these tables will be having is this strange concept of a quick general election with the most shocking results that we've possibly seen. I think <laughs> Anne Jenkins pointed that out to us. From your perspective, you've been re-elected, one of the lucky ones. <laughs> How do you see it falling along? Well, thank you. And so I suppose it was always a dangerous place for a politician to be between an audience and their food. So I shall keep this, keep this brief. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been, look, it's been an extraordinary, uh, what, more than just more than 72 hours, I suppose, in British politics. And as you say, we just seem to go on. Uh, politics in this country seems to just get more and more interesting. And uh, <laughs> that's interesting as in the Chinese curse interesting. So, um, and challenging. And um, yeah, it, it was a snap poll, unexpected. And uh, seven weeks, I have to say, doesn't feel like a snap election when you're out on the, uh, the ground. And clearly the result was not what any of us in my party campaigned for, but there's lots of lessons that we need to learn. And I think Anne's point about, you know, we really hope for an influx of female uh, talent and they're out there. Um, and, uh, and so we really want to see them on the green benches in the, in the future. But we now have to work out, and I've just come from a meeting, the Prime Minister's talking to Conservative backbenchers about where we go from here, because I think actually what people do want now is certainty of government. There's no appetite for another election. And I think it's really important, many of you be aware of the Brexit negotiations that start next Monday, and it's really important we, you know, we make progress with those. Your conversations with the Prime Minister is very apt that she had this today, and then we have food, dinner, and the conversation about the Prime Minister. How clear is the direction from 10 Downing Street at this point about where we're going, and how the conversations are going to go between Brussels and London? Well, I think on the latter point, I mean, look, before I was in politics, I'm a solicitor, a lawyer by profession, and I know that negotiations never, ever quite work out. You know, you have a negotiating plan and it never quite goes according to that plan. So I think the honest truth is we don't know. We have our demands as a country. Uh, Brussels will have their view and their demands, and we'll see where we end up. I think in terms of the programme of government, uh, those of you who are used to governments where coalitions are normal, uh, we are in uncharted territory again, trying to agree uh, a deal with a smaller party from Northern Ireland that will enable us to uh, win votes potentially in the House of Commons. But um, what that deal is going to look like and whether it's what's called confidence and supply, which means on certain votes we'll get their support, but it's not a full-scale coalition as we had with the Lib Dems in 2010. And then what that means in terms of legislative programme, one of the things I did ask the Prime Minister about was a likely Queen's speech, which is next week. Her Majesty the Queen will come to Parliament, announce the programme of government. And one of the things the Prime Minister is really keen on, and I am too, is mental health, supporting people with mental health issues. There's more we can do, there's more we said we wanted to do. That kind of thing, I think, can get the support of the whole House of Commons, and that's the thing we can make progress on. I think a number of women here would also be keen to hear your perspective on this potential coalition we hear with the DUP, how does that play out when it comes to hot Brexit, soft Brexit, in between Brexit, potentially no Brexit? <laughs> I mean, every option has been thrown out there. So from where you're sitting and the conversations you're having within the Conservative Party, do you see the DUP's participation really changing the tonality for what Brussels is hearing right now? Well, I think one of the things that um, clearly one of the trickiest issues in the whole Brexit negotiations is what happens between the border between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. And I think that the DUP being involved potentially in some kind of agreement with us will, uh, will add a perspective to that. Um, and I think one of the things that the Prime Minister has been very clear about, I think all politicians, anyone involved in Northern Ireland has said, we do not want to go back to a hard border. And I think the DUP being involved will make that even more important. Um, and I think in terms of you know, where we go, the, the one thing the PM said this evening was that she understands we need to have a, uh, the support for Brexit from across my party. And I have a particular view and, and other colleagues will have different views on, uh, on Brexit, but also across the House of Commons, because it has been a hugely divisive issue for this country. It obviously impacted on the election we saw last week. And I think now we need to see how many people we can get to come together and to move in that direction for the future of our country. I think the one last question I want to ask you before we wrap this very quick interview up is, we're all in this room listening to each other and kind of trying to gain knowledge and direction from each other's experiences. Do you see that happening going forward um, in 10 Downing Street, in Parliament, from the lessons we've learned from this particular election? 
Yes, I mean, I, I, I do. I think um, there are, uh, and Michael Fallon, the Defence Secretary, talked about it yesterday on the interviews in, uh, on, on uh, TV. You know, there have been... There have been not great communication between the Parliamentary Party and Number 10 Downing Street and others, and I think that lesson has been heeded, and we have the Prime Minister appointed a new Chief of Staff, who was an MP until he sadly lost his seat last week. He's a great London MP, he's been a great campaigner, and I think that's really going to help in terms of making sure that MPs have a real input in the policy process and the direction of travel, and the PM you know, really recognised that in what she said to us this evening. Nikki, on that note, thank you so very, very much for such an insightful, insightful take on what's been going on um, in this election. I know our friends in, in the US and in Europe have been quite keen to understand what the heck is going on, right? But so are we. Exactly, but what better time to do it than over dinner. But thank you very much, and ladies, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> thank you.